There's a drain screw in the bottom of the bowl that we can remove with a 3 millimeter Allen wrench right now. Now we need to get the floats out. There's a little pin right here that is not staked in place. It's actually held in place by these two ears once the bowl is over the floats. So to get that out you take your pokey thing and you just gently push that pin out a little bit and then you can grab a hold of the floats pull that pin out and then pull the floats out. Now here is that needle or excuse me uh, inlet valve I was talking about and it just fits over this little metal tang that is in the back of the float assembly. This tip is rubber and it seals down in the bottom of that well. The fuel comes in here, comes out here, and this is what shuts it on and off. Now we want to get the main jet out. So we take our 8 millimeter box and set it over the jet holder and our thin bladed screwdriver and just crack that off and turn it out a couple of turns and pull it out. You'll also want to note what size jet is in there. The proper size for a Gen 1 is 147.5 and for a Gen 2 is a 145. With the jet out we can now remove the jet holder and this has got an emulsifier tube on it with tiny little holes in it. So that screws out and you can see it's a long assembly. These are the little air holes right along here on both sides and those have a tendency to clog so we'll want to clean those real well. Now the only part left is the part that I was warning you about earlier on and it is called the jet needle and it's a little silver part that what often happens is people don't know it's there or they think it's a part of the carburetor body and so they take their carburetor and they walk it over someplace and on the way that little sucker falls out. Did it fall out? There it fell out. That's what it looks like. And I have seen uh, posts on the forums about these things being completely missing. I have seen posts on the forum where they were installed this way. I will just tell you that without this little part, this carburetor is useless. It will not work. So make sure that you get this part and put it away safely. So now we've got this carburetor body about as far apart as we possibly can. We've got all the rubber bits out of it. The only thing left is way down in there and it's the pilot jet. There we go. Okay. We spin that out until we feel it clunk a couple of times. And then turn everything over and let it fall out. And that's what the Pilot Jet looks like. It also has a little emulsion tube on it. I think the stock size is a number 40. You can get larger ones if you've got uh, a modified exhaust and that sort of thing. Where you've got uh, some popping going on, you can get a larger one if you need. With that, everything is out of this carburetor. I don't think there's anything else that we could possibly remove. Certainly we have no rubber parts. What needs to be done now is this carburetor body needs to be soaked. And you can use a commercial uh, carburetor cleaner. You can buy a carburetor cleaner in a can with a basket and dunk this thing in there. Willie's is a proponent of uh, using the original formula um, pine salt 
And I like that idea. I think it's an environmentally friendly idea. It's certainly easier on uh, uh, the carburetor body. It's easier on your hands and that kind of stuff. So probably would be a good thing to try. And uh, I've heard really good reports about it. So I, I think that's the way to go with this stuff. The one thing I will caution is do not put anything rubber into anything that you're using to clean the carburetor body. I was at a tech day once where the slide assembly and diaphragm got dunked in carburetor fluid and when it came out the diaphragm was about that big and uh, you know obviously that's not going to work. Um, pretty well ruined the diaphragm I think. This diaphragm doesn't need to be dunked in anything to clean it. It can be wiped down so there's no reason to put this into any kind of a cleaner solution. If you're going to do it, make sure that uh, you know that it won't be affected by whatever you're putting it into. Same thing with this little diaphragm assembly. The one rubber part that we don't want to overlook is this gasket that's in the bowl. Before we put the bowl into any solution, we want to get this gasket out. It's, and it's oftentimes a little stuck, so we want to very carefully uh, pry it out of its groove. Don't use any metal tool or anything. You don't want to nick it but just carefully work it around and get it out and then you can go ahead and put the bowl into the solution. Any of the plastic parts should not be dunked. So what you should dunk is the carburetor body, the bowl, the uh, jet holder, the jets, both the main and the pilot. Go ahead and dunk the screw, uh, excuse me, the uh, idle mixture screw, the, the needle jet, the plug for the drain screw. You can dunk the bracket if you want to. Um, you can dunk the spring, either the diaphragm spring and the uh, enricher spring. Anything that's metal you can dunk and probably should. Um, once and leave it soak for a good 24 hours, uh, agitating halfway through if you can. Uh, if the carburetor body is really dirty, go ahead and brush it with a toothbrush. And um, what, you're, what you're trying to do is get all of the orifices and passages cleaned of any varnish that may have uh, gotten in there from you know the disuse and that's what's causing the carburetor problem is, is the dirt and gunk and crud and varnish that's in the passageways. When your parts come out of the cleaning tank it's time to work on the jets and all their little orifices and what I'd like to have on hand for that is a few strands of copper wire they're useful for putting through the small little holes that are in the emulsifier tubes and a bit of stiff twine which is or a pipe cleaner pipe cleaner will also work you want to take and run your pipe cleaner or your um, stiff bit of twine through things and scrub them out I also like to have on hand a bit of uh, brake cleaner and one of those aerosol cans of compressed air the kind that you use for cleaning keyboards on a computer that's both of those have got the little red nozzle on them and you can stick your nozzle in there and get the spray directed to where you need it to be and the air pressure directed to where you need it to be so you need to clean anything that's got a hole in it by running a pipe cleaner or a bit of uh, cotton twine through it same with the both of the jets with the little bit of copper wire you can poke through these little orifices and make sure that they're clean and go through each one of them to make sure there's no blockage or anything on the carburetor body itself there aren't any really fine orifices but there are a couple that you should pay attention to. There's one that goes from here back to the coasting enricher valve and you'll want to run something through that. 
to make sure that there's no big chunks of crud or anything in there and then blow it out with your compressed air. Look for any other orifices that uh, look like they should be blown out. Right here there's a, a transfer port that goes from the top side of the uh, the Venturi to the inlet. You can look through there, clean that out with a with a pipe cleaner. Just generally go through and clean any holes, any orifices, and make sure that they're clean and clear and ready to reassemble the carburetor.